people are going to miss it, that there would literally even be churches that one day they would turn around and had watered down stuff so much they didn't even realize that the Lord's not even in their church. Last night I had one of the scariest prophetic dreams I ever had, and I was constantly talking to ministers, and, and I would tell these ministers in this dream, why did you remove the Lord? Why did you go seeker-friendly? Why did you move the Holy Spirit? Why did you do this? And in this dream, they all had this terror and scary look on their face. And they all said, we don't know. We just kind of started, you know, you get more people if you kind of don't preach, you know, the full truth. And you just kind of, and then all of a sudden you get real performance-based. And you get all of this, and then you water it down to the point that everybody's coming, and you can't turn back. And in this dream, it was so real, and the Lord was just speaking to me about you're going to have to preach and teach the truth. And so when you talk to different people uh, about the truths of the God, this was great. I've never had anything happen to me like I did last night. I'm excited about it. I felt like I was in a classroom with the Lord, and he explained to me what the church was. I mean, this was crazy. I was like, like, like I was in the fourth grade, and I was, I was actually listening, which was different. But I was like listening, and the Lord explained to me what the church was. It's in Acts. The church is described in Acts exactly the way the church is supposed to be. Um, the foundation of it is prayer. And so, and the thing was, the, the Lord is speaking to me that so many people aren't doing life ministry church the way the Bible, it's not even biblical, but then they're asking him to bless what he didn't ordain. And so the, the Lord is, is a, I feel another book coming on, okay? I've already, I've already written, I don't know how many I wrote this year, but I wrote a lot. But we're going to write some more. And the Lord started speaking this to me. And, and then the Lord gave me a bunch more dreams. I'll probably share all those next week. But, but, but I'm going to tell you something. You're about to dream. You can come to church and hear a good word and listen to good worship. But when you hear a prophetic word God gives you, not something a preacher said, it shifts everything. When you get a dream, it shifts everything. Okay? Now, I don't like the atmosphere that's in here right now. I don't, I don't do this. Now, in, in choreographed church, they, they can't break the script. But we ain't like that. So we are going to pray. Now, here's what the, the atmosphere is. If there's any type of warfare that comes in, and, and then if you come in and your mind's confused, you just bring it in, you know, and we're going to pray and we're going to break it. But, but, but last week, I thought, boy, we was going to run, a, you know, have, have to have people to stand on the floor. We had so many folks. And this week, I think some folks thought it was Saturday. Okay? And so we're going to pray, and we're about to break this. Yeah. Mo, you feel like praying? Get up here, Mo. Mo's going to come up here and pray with me because we were talking about this. So Autumn's already up. She's ready to roll. So I declare in Jesus' name, Lord, I declare that any attack, any, any just assassination verbally, any demonic plan, any scheme, any wile of the devil, we rebuke it. We're not going to carry this atmosphere. We're about to see a shift in the spirit. There is going to be an impartation of the Holy Ghost in this place today. There is, so lives are going to get radically changed. Lives are going to get radically shifted today. It's going to happen by the Holy Spirit. It is going to happen. Verbal assassination of the enemy. You have no strength. You have no place to land. Because every person is here is here for a reason. And they are going to be received everything Holy Spirit has and I hear the Holy Spirit saying today is your day of restoration today is your day that you will be restored the enemy will no longer have a hold on you your past is your past bury it and move on today is a day of reconciliation today is a day get ready for recompense recompense will be paid to you today the spirit of the lord says it's not shit all right all right that's good okay everybody has homework this week okay you got homework i'm i know y'all like homework your homework assignment is you need to lead one person to the lord this week outside of the church and you need to you need to lay hands on three people that are sick and you need to see them recover okay so that's your homework for the week all right 
and you just get out there because, you know, when, when God, whenever he told us to start th- this church, we launched it in 12 days. I mean, that's a great church growth uh, plan, right? You just launched one in 12 days. And, and, and the Lord said, roar. So I roared. I was like, Mufasa. I was like, I roared. And, and the Lord's like, no, 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 roar. Revival, outpouring, awakening, reformation. See, people have a revival, and, and then th- they have this outpouring, and they're truly awakened. And then the reformation part is when th- they learn, okay? And so if you look at Ephesians 2.20, y'all know what's not, it's not the scripture, but you know what it says. The foundation of the church, not a church, the church is built on Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone he is the chief cornerstone, okay? Always has been, always will be. And the teaching of the apostles and the words given by the prophets. Most people have no idea what an apostle and a prophet is. So the foundation of the biblical church is already off. Where was the church birth? A bunch of people in a prayer room, okay? I'm telling you, where we're headed in this great nation, and I'm going to call it great, because that's what it is in my eyes. We are going to see some things shift. All right. Now, you're going to like today's message. It is full of prophetic stuff. And God gave me some scriptures. And so we're about to dive into this today. All right. First thing God gave me. This was last Sunday morning. And this is what's cool. Every Sunday morning when I wake up, he's been giving me the word for next week already the Sunday before. And it's so hard not to preach them. But because they're fresh. All right. And, and so this is what the Lord spoke to me last week. Last Sunday morning, I woke up. He said, heaviness is lifting. And I said, okay, that's a cool word. But he said, no, I'm going to show you. And imagine there was like a stack of, of, of bricks or something. He put his hand on one brick, picked it up, moved it over. And he said, I'm removing heaviness to a level. But I have to put it somewhere. It's going to the world. That is the shift. You're about to see, have you thought over 2022, 2023, that, you, that it looked like in our world that the enemy had the upper hand, that there's some things where you just were, you're under a heaviness? Let me just tell you, heaviness is, is being moved. The world is not going to excel like they were. The church is about to excel. The people of God are going to excel. When I was talking to Mo this morning, she said, it's like I feel the assignment of the enemy is against the kingdom kids i'm telling you you are going to move and operate at a faster pace than you ever have before tyler and jennifer fast pace it's on your life get ready might want to get some running shoes it's going to be fast pace no stilettos or boots okay it's it's going to be a fast pace and so the lord said that things are about to get easier without chaos but you're going to have to not listen to the enemy or have the chatter of the enemy. As I was praying that the Lord said the wicked is actually fleeing. How many people feel like you've been in warfare for the past two, two and a half years? It, it, it's broke off of you. There is no chaos. There is no change. Isaiah 61 3 to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. We ain't mourning anymore. Unto beauty for ashes. You once had ashes. Now it's beauty. Okay. And it said the awe of joy for mourning. In the last seasons where you had mourning, you are about to have joy. Okay? And it said the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Heaviness is gone. You're about to have the spirit of praise. What was the word that God gave me? It was heaviness is lifting and being repositioned to the enemy. So the enemy is going to be harder for the enemy to move forward in your life. And it's going to be easier for you to move forward. You better break out those old prophetic journals, okay, because you're about to move in it. Luke 1, 78 and 79, a new day will dawn on us. And above because, our, I'm feeling, I was going to teach today and be a studious like, like this. It ain't working. And it says, it says, a new day will dawn on us from above because our God is loving and merciful. He will give light to those who live in the darkness and in death shadow. It didn't say death. It said death shadow. It's just trying to scare you. But he ain't got nothing on you. And it said he will guide us into the way of peace. If you will listen to your God today, he will guide you into the place of peace. He will put you in a place when chaos is going on. I don't want no part of that because my word says he will guide you into the place of peace. But if you don't let him guide you, you're going to go over into the shadow of death. 
But I don't want to be over there. It's spooky over there. I don't watch horror movies. Uh Uh-uh. And so I'm going to go on over to the good stuff. Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not grow weary in doing good. If you're weary, shake it off. And it says, for in due season we will reap. And if we do not give up, if you don't give up, the Bible says you're going to reap. What if you gave up and tomorrow was your breakthrough? How many people quit right before their breakthrough comes? And if it doesn't come tomorrow, it's probably going to come the day after that. And if it doesn't come that day, it's going to come like that. And then have you ever been like, you know, you kind of like hope deferred makes the heart sick. And then all of a sudden you quit thinking about it. And then it just comes. It just happens. Listen, if you don't quit, you're going to have your breakthrough. That's how it is. Now, I've got two more strong prophetic words to give you. And this is probably one of my favorite words I've ever, ever to the ever gave before in my life. Okay? Y'all know where I was when I got this word. I was right here in my spot. And, uh, and I heard the word divine intel. And I said, okay, I kind of know what intel is, Lord. But I'm not going to try to sound too smart, so I'm going to Google it. You ever got a word from God and you had to go Google the exact meaning of the word? So y'all, so y'all are as smart as me right on this, okay? And so, and so I went and looked at the word intel, and it said information on military or political value. The Bible is your policy, okay? It is your policy, and we are the army of the Lord. And so divine intel is heavenly insight to move you forward to fight anything on any policy that God has given you. Your whole life can be operated out of the place of divine intel matched up with the word of God. You can defeat anything. You you never have to have any fear, anxiety, doubt, worry. It tries to come. It only knocks on my door 17 times a day. And you know what? I just deal with it in the place of the spirit. I don't give way to it. You have to move forward. And so this is what the Lord spoke to me. This is, this is the part you have to hear. I felt the Lord say, things will not get better without it. Now here's the problem. I sure hope things get better. Well, boo-boo, it's probably not without divine intel, okay? Well, I'm just going to, you know, sit over here and, you know, and whatever. I'm just going to be scared and pray in a corner. Well, praying's good, but my word says the righteous are as bold as a lion. I've never seen the lion back up from a chihuahua dog devil. Listen, you got to be bold. Things aren't going to get better without it. And so this is why my heart has been breaking for a lot of churches. You know, I told you last week that Chuck Pierce said if the church of America was judged today, 80% of churches would be judged as the world. They would not even be judged as as a house of God. And so you, you have to understand that things aren't going to get better until we have divine intel. If your business is failing, get divine intel. If your marriage is failing, get divine intel. You know, I'm not as smart as people think I am. I'm really not. But I, I've written a lot of books that are really good. Don't tell anybody. I just kind of sit there and say, God, what do you mean to write? And there was one day I was writing in the Holy Spirit. I, I, hey, listen, I didn't pay attention to typing class. Y'all know how that was. I was. There was smoke coming off my keyboard when I was writing. I actually was writing this one like, I said, woo, look at me, the Holy Ghost. And, uh, and so it's just that divine intel because God said, I got something that I need to give somebody to put out. Will you put out what he has given you? Do you know a lot of y'all are prophetic, and I've never heard you give a prophetic word? I mean, you, you, you got it. I don't know why I'm looking at Amy Coleman. But um, <laughs> she, she's, got a, she's, got, she's so prophetic. When she'll talk about something, it's just, it's just prophetic, okay? And so you got to understand that w- when you leave this church, don't ever think you're going about life as normal. You're going to walk out of here, and, and, and it's like, like you're going to have like, like a Dumbo ear in the spirit, okay? Not in the natural, because that would be weird. But in the spirit, you're going to have like this Dumbo ear, and you're going to walk around, and the Holy Spirit will say, that person at that table, go give them a word. Go buy their, their dinner. Go buy that person's groceries. Go cast the devil on that person at Walmart. After you do it, run. They'll think you're weird if they get slain in the spirit, okay? And just uh, literally, I was praying for this one person in the frozen food section, and uh, they was already frozen, and, and, uh, and so they was praying, and they opened somebody's praying, and they kind of started doing like this, and so I just kind of eased them in and kind of prayed like this. They kind of leaned up, and I kind of got out of there, you know, because they was caught up on the dough. And <laughs> but when you pray for people, hey, listen, you can't say, God, um, 
use me um, here or here. I mean, you're going to go to the fair and you're going to go to the restroom and there's going to be a drunk guy. I'm not saying that happened recently up there. And the Lord says, give him a prophetic word. He won't remember it. He said, but his spirit will. But his spirit will. You know how Texas people are. They drink beer on Saturday night, and then they go talk about the good Lord on Sunday morning. Not people of this church, other people. But, but you know what? Their spirit, what we'll get up there. And this one old guy, he was, he was rough. I just kind of started patting him on the back. The Bible says lay hands on people. I was, he, he thought I was Spanish, but I was praying in the spirit. I was preaching in tongues, and I was patting him on his back. And he's like, what are you saying, man? I said, oh, no, no. I said, I didn't know if you speak Spanish or what. <laughs> I just kept going. But you got to pray for people in public wherever you go. Wherever you go. Okay, y'all get me off. Okay, divine intel. Ephesians 1.17. I pray that the Father of glory, the, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation. To know him through your deepening intimacy with him. If you carry the spirit of wisdom and revelation, your life would shift forever. Complete shift forever. Don't even make a little decision without moving in the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Because when you're moving with him, stuff really don't make sense. It really don't make sense. That's how you got to have that faith with God. Now, I'm going to give you one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Uh, Isaiah 11.2, the spirit of Yahweh will rest upon him, the spirit of extraordinary wisdom, the spirit of perfect understanding, the spirit of wise strategy, and the spirit of mighty power, and the spirit of revelation, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Now, let's just look at this. If you had extraordinary wisdom, and you had perfect understanding... You would really have no problems. Well, what did we read earlier about and talk about the guiding of the Holy Spirit? He will guide you into everything. And then it says when you have this, the spirit of wise strategy, you will know how to execute everything in your life. And then the spirit of mighty power. And once God opens the door, you'll own the room. You will actually own the room. The spirit of revelation, it makes sense to everything. And with the fear of the Lord, you don't want to get out of step with him. It's really that simple. And the things of this world where we're heading, remember I said things will not get better in life without the divine intel. Because the world, the church, the everything has gotten so far off, God is bringing it back to the original. What is the original message? It is the kingdom. It is Jesus Christ dying on a cross for our sins. But before he died on the cross for our sins, he said, I came to preach and teach and manifest the kingdom of God. And when we get back to the kingdom mindset, everything shifts. You know, it doesn't go government church. The way God intended it, it was, it was the church, then the government. See, in the Bible, in the Old Testament days, what would happen is the kings would go to the prophets. They would govern nations off what the prophets said. Now most churches don't even have prophets. They won't even let prophets. And so they've moved it down. But the Lord is shifting things back to the Bible, which is kind of like our instruction manual. But a lot of people, they're like dads when they put toys together. I don't need that stuff. What's these extra 14 parts? They don't matter. Who needs a motor in this thing? You know, it's just you got to understand we're going back to that. Proverbs 2 and 6. Wisdom is a gift from a generous God. Listen, my wife loves gifts. I like them, but she loves them. If somebody gives Autumn a gift, she's going to receive it. Why would you not receive the gift that God gives you? He's given you wisdom. Not y'all, but some other folks I know, they ain't receiving their gifts recently. Okay? And they're not moving in wisdom. Get the gift God's given you. He wants to give you wisdom. And it says every word he speaks is full of revelation and becomes a foundation of understanding within you. If you keep messing up, it's because your foundation is not fixed. If you know the word of God, your foundation will be rock solid and everything you build will stand. Do you know why some people can't 
build and build and build because they got to rebuild everything all the time because they have no foundation. When your foundation is set and your foundation is on the word of God. Okay, listen, when your foundation is on the written word of God, God will build everything else off the prophetic word of God. Your prophetic word will never last if it's not on the written word of God. Most people that have a, a pathetic word, I, I meant a prophetic word, and they go off this pathetic word, and I say, if the, if the word of God doesn't align with it, it's not going to work, okay? And so it's a house of cards. And so when you know the word of God, God will start to reveal to you prophetic words. You will step into a prophetic destiny, and you will be able to build something more powerful than any generation you've ever seen in your lineage. I'm telling you, you are going to be able to build. How many of you know uh, parents, grandparents? You heard stories about your great-great-grandparents, about how smart they were, how wise they were, how this and that. But something along the way, they missed it. You ain't going to miss a thing. You are not going to miss a thing. You will not miss a thing. Okay? James 1 and 5. And if anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he'll give it to you. Listen, if you don't think you're wise, ask God. He'll give you wisdom. Okay? And it says he won't see, um, see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures but he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. So I don't care if you have stumbled and fallen seven times. The Bible says you can fall 70 times seven. If you're not good at math, that's 490. Okay, that you can get back up and do it again. But do it this time in wisdom. You know, I've heard people that, that had big businesses and then that they, they went bankrupt or it went all the way down. And then they would say, hey, you know what? I'm going to learn from that. I'm going to, I'm going to do it again. And it go back up. Uh, I heard a guy, he, he had a church and he, he messed up on some things and didn't do some things right. He went totally bankrupt on his church. And everybody said, why are you going to build another church? He said, oh, I got some experience now. And he came back in and launched it. And now he's in a $15 million building project and has $10 million of it paid off. Well, he learned, but he didn't let his past failures hold him back because he started to build off of it. Listen, you, the enemy will throw your past failures in your face. Throw it back. I don't want that stuff. I'm throwing it back at you, okay? You got to learn how to throw back. Now, the next word, you're going to love this one, okay? I'm going to help you. If you can remember what I'm going to tell you here, it will help you for the rest of your life. As I was praying this week, the third word God gave me was rise above everything prophetically like an eagle. OK, and so you got to learn how to rise above every problem and soar over them and look for something alive in every situation. OK, Isaiah 40, 31. But those who entwine their hearts with Yahweh will experience divine strength. What does that mean? In any hardship in life, your experience, God will give you divine strength to get you through anything. And it says, and they will rise up on soaring wings and flying like eagles. Then they will run the races without growing weary and walk through life without giving up. Okay? So let me explain it like this. Let's say you go through some trauma in your life. Let's say you go through a bad situation. Let's say you go through some kind of hurt. Somebody close to you hurt you, offended you. This is what you do. You're in the situation, okay? Y'all follow me? Prophetically means you take a step up and you look down and say, God, what's really going on here? I need a higher view. I need a higher view of this. And the Lord will show you. I had this guy one time. He did something like four kinds of wrong to me. And uh, it frustrated me, hurt me, affected a whole lot of people. He did me wrong, wrong. And, and one day I was just like, all right, God, he's a good person. I think he kind of likes me. But um, why in the world did he did this? Why did he do this? And so I, I prayed. I got up high. And I looked down low. And the Lord showed me. He didn't know what to do in the situation. And there was a lot of people that was about to be impacted. So the way that he did it was wrong in your eyes. But he had you in mind when he did it. He had you in his heart. And he knew this would protect you from greater pain in the future. Even though it was painful now, he knew your relationship with me was so strong that you would get through it. And you would be better. And I told him to never talk to you about it. I said, well, that makes no sense in the natural. <laughs> and he said, I know. And I was praying. I felt the Lord say, are you stronger? I said, oh, yeah. And uh, guys never talked to me about it. 
And it, he did because he didn't know what to do. You ever been in a bad situation? You didn't know what to do? You made the, the best thing, the best effort you thought you could on a situation. And in fact, there was a lot of tension and turmoil. But don't be mad at the person that hurts you. You don't know what they're going through. You really don't know what they're going through. So what you do, a heavenly perspective is, how does heaven see this situation? Hey, you know what? This is crazy. God showed me one time. You're not going to believe this. That I'm not the only person in a situation. Can, can you knew that? I didn't know that. Circle maker. I thought it was all about me, book club. <laughs> but it was like, I'm not the only person in a situation or a conflict between two or four or ten people. And so what the Lord showed me was that sometimes you got to back up and you've got to get up on that higher perspective and look down and see what's going on. Like I was, when I was about 18 years ago, I was frustrated with this minister that did something wrong. And I was praying. I, I, I was trying to learn how to get up and look down. And the Lord said, he didn't mean it like that. So I called him and I said, what did you mean by this action? He said, oh, I didn't mean it like that. That's what God said. I said, oh, okay. I, w- I was going to almost try to get offended on something that he didn't even mean. He just, you know what he did? He verbalized it wrong. And if I was an offended person, which I have been in my life, I tried offense. Didn't look good on me. And so you don't take it. A lot of people are hurt by people. Like, you know somebody hurt you one time and you saw them and you were like side-eyeing them like this. And they saw you and they said, hey, how are you doing? And you were like, wait a minute, I thought we didn't like each other. What? Well, maybe it's. Maybe it's me. And they come up and talk to you like they're your best friend. And then they leave and you're like, what's going on, God? And he says, get on up. Get on up. And you get up and you look down that heavenly perspective like, oh, that's what's going on. You know what God told me another time? I can't believe he did this to me. But, but so, somebody said something rude to me. And, and I said, why did he do this? And the Lord said, what did you say to him first? That does not matter. That does not matter, Lord. No, smite him. Um, but the Lord, and, and, and so a soft answer turns away wrath. Hey, you know, when, when, when there could be an argument or a disagreement this, that it's just not worth getting into, y'all know my word. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and you just, you just go with it. And, and so Judah did that to me one day. She said, okay. I'm like, mm. she listens. <laughs> but your heavenly perspective, what's really going on? Like what is really going on? Like, like if, if, if you and somebody you think is your friend and, and they cancel two or three times in a row on you to do something, what's really going on? Maybe the, one of their parents or grandparents are really sick. And they don't want to just tell everybody what's going on, and they got to take care of them. Maybe their finances, they can't go out. Maybe they're going through a battle that nobody even knows they're going through. You have no idea what other people are going through. But you know what? A lot of times I go through stuff that y'all don't know I go through. But you know what? I get it right with the Lord, and I show up. And and that's one of the biggest problems with people today. They can't work through anything. If you want to do anything in your life, you got to learn how to work through. you got to learn how to work through stuff and, and, and keep moving forward. You know, let's say that you work a, a, a job 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and you're having a bad day. You best punch that clock. <laughs> you best get to work. You know what? And, and so I remember my dad one time, he was, a, he was tough, and he just like, he broke his knee, and I said, Dad, your, your knee's broke. He said, well, don't you think I know it, son? I said, yes, sir. He said, you know, he walked on it for about three weeks. And he he said, got some stuff I got to get done. He broke his hip one time. And he he walked on it for five weeks with a broke hip. And I thought, Dad, when you walk, it kind of, your hip's broke. He said, I know. And uh, he said, but I got some stuff I got to do. He said, son, if I don't don't go to work, he said, I don't work for a company. I work for myself. He said, we don't get paid. And I said, we? I'm not. Fourth grade, what's this we? He said, we, we're a family. If I don't work, we don't get paid. And uh, he said, all those horses you got out there that I paid for? I said, go on to work, Dad. <laughs> go on to work. Go on to work. And uh, 
Uh, and, but the thing is, you got to learn how in the spirit to get through some things. you got to learn how, how to get along with some people that you may not like, okay? Why, what, what is God saying? See, the scripture I read in Isaiah 40, 31, they rise up on soaring wings. So here's what's cool. If a crow or blackbird ever comes at an eagle, they get up there and they peck at their neck. They're, listen, y'all ready for some good? They're scared to come to the eagle face to face. If you are a prophetic person, which you all are, if you're in this house, you're prophetic, okay? If you're not, wait a minute, you'll be there. But you're prophetic. They will never come to you face to face. They'll always come to you back here. And what does the eagle do to fight? Nothing. He just soars higher. And all of a sudden, he can, an eagle can breathe at a degree where no other bird can. So the little blackbird gets tired of, 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 of you know, backstabbing, coming behind their back. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. It, it just falls off and goes and finds another bird. And the eagle keeps soaring. You know what the eagle does when it's soaring? It's looking for something that is alive. In any situation, when you soar up higher, you will find the one thing that is alive. Okay? The, the maturity is if somebody does you wrong and you say, God, um, are, we, uh, uh, are we done? And he says, no, they just need a minute, but they'll be back. You're like, okay. And uh, I had one guy call me a few months ago. He says, man, I did you wrong. I said, oh, really? I don't remember. I think I was lying. But he said, man, you know, I just, you were so nice to me. And what I did to you was wrong. I said, yeah, that's cool. And uh, he said, Why? I said, but God, God said we were friends for life because you did that to me. I can't break that covenant. God told me we're, we're connected. But because you broke your side of the covenant, my half of the bridge is still built. You know what? I can build bridges. And if you want to, I'll even build back. I said, but I'm going to build back slow. I said, it may not ever be like it used to be, but we'll see. And so you got to understand when people, you know, the enemy will come in and try to bring a wedge between family members and friends and co-workers. God didn't put that wedge there. Don't let the wedge be seen out of your eyes when God's trying to build something. Y'all listen to me today? Uh, a lot of times people, they have a wedge that was never supposed to be there. What, what are we talking about today? Getting divine intel to rise up higher because if you want to build, you have to come up at a higher 2024, baby, to 2025, 2026, we're going to build like you have never built before in your life. And it's going to be harder to build for some people, but not for kingdom people because we have divine intel. A prophetic word is like an arrow shot through a brick wall. Nothing can stop the prophetic word of God. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. There is one thing that can stop a prophetic word, you. That's it. And if you die to your flesh to live in the spirit, listen, if you do what the Bible says, and you die to the flesh to live in the spirit, you'll have no fear. You'll have no, listen, you don't have a say in it. If God says go, go, he'll figure it out. He'll bring people. That's why the Bible talks about uh, uh, gifts of administration to help. People will come alongside and help you, okay? Ecclesiastes 8 and 5, a wise man will know both when and what to do. Okay, <laughs> if you ever say, I don't know what to do, <laughs> the Bible says you ain't wise. Okay, uh, but it didn't say women, it said men, so women, you are okay, all right? But, but it says a wise man's mind will know both what and when to do. So what you do is you pull back and you say, all right, God, I need divine intel, okay? I need divine intel, and I need to step up here, and I need to know when and what to do. Okay, what does an eagle do when it's looking for prey that's alive? Because it's so far up there, it finds when it's a long way out of the bush. What does it do? It calculates its next move, okay? So you got to understand that. A lot of times you need to learn, Circle Maker Book Club, you need to learn how to view long-term goals, okay? An eagle is not going to swoop down on, on a little, little rabbit, a little rat. Say rats. I like rabbits. I don't like rats. A little rat. It's not going to wait when it sticks its head out of the bush. It's going to wait till it gets a long way out, okay? You got to learn how to hear the Lord for what's coming in the next few years, just not tomorrow. Um, a lot of people are like, I'm just trying to live paycheck to paycheck. I'm trying to figure out well, how I can pay my bills next Friday. Y'all, I'm thinking three to five years down the road. You got to start thinking long term on some things, all right? First Thessalonians 5.11, therefore encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Now, if somebody is drowning, they're not trying to help anybody, but they will take everybody around them down with them, okay? I, I know people who have went through 
their whole entire families and their, 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 their mind may be messed up. They may be on something. They may be strung out or they may just have a toxic mindset or just they may be they just never did what they needed to do to be where they need to be. And they have burnt every bridge in their family. The very thing God put in their life, they destroyed every relationship because all they're doing is drowning. And they're trying to find the next life preserver that can hold them up for a week or two. Hold them up for a week or two. Okay, I will be honest with you on this one. Um, there are some people I know that borrow money from everybody and they don't pay them back. So they asked me for money one time. And I gave it to them <laughs> because they don't talk to the people that they borrowed money from. <laughs> so I loaned them the money. It wasn't a lot. And uh, they won't talk to me anymore. <laughs> I said, you know, they'll keep calling you to give them the money. Do y'all get that? There are some people that will bother you until, but there's no give and take. If you're in a real friendship, if you're in a relationship, it is a give. I got some friends, we will almost borderline fight for the ticket at a restaurant we will fight for the ticket because they want to bless me but I want to bless them but like no when you find somebody good and and you buy the meal you're act, you're going to reap whatever you give you're going to reap more back cuz cuz God loves when people bless his kids okay Luke 14:28 suppose one of you want to build a tower would you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it. A lot of people fail in life because they don't go long term. They're a lot like, let me, spiritually, what is your plan over the next year, three years, five years? Do you even have a plan when it comes to books? How many books have you bought that are sitting there that you haven't read that you know you're going to read over the next year, two years, three years? I got about a 20-year supply set up. But, you know, I just have these books. You ever buy books and you don't read them? But you know they're there for a reason. I got a book by Bill Winston on the kingdom of God that's been wearing me out for two years. And God says, it's not time. And I, I'm just about to read that book. But the Lord says, it's not time. It's not time. It's not time. But the time's coming. I got it sitting on my, uh, right by my, behind my desk. And I look at it every day. I say, God, is it time? Is it time? He will position a book in your life to teach you how to build towards the future. Okay. It says, therefore, encourage one another. Let me ask you this. Who have you encouraged this week? Who have you put before you? Who in your family, your friends, your coworkers, the one that you don't like at cubicle 14? The, I mean, who is the person that you have said, I will encourage you no matter what. I will make your life better. If you get around me, your life will be better. It, it just, if Listen, if you don't want to grow, you will go, okay? You got to be around people to do that, all right? Now, a lot of people, and it says if you don't have enough money to complete it, sometimes God will give you a vision, and the vision is so far down the road, but the thing is he wants you to start gathering wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and finances to do that. If God's vision for you, you can afford it, it ain't big enough. It's not big enough. You got to be able to dream. You know why? Because when God teaches you how to get more wisdom, more knowledge, more understanding, more finances, how many more people can you bless with that wisdom? Man, when the Lord started teaching me about, about, about healing ministry and we started seeing uh, a, lo a lot of people healed, I was reading. You know what? I got a lot of wisdom and knowledge and experience on that now. But you know what? I had to start learning. I had to start equipping myself and get my minds off of me, okay? Hebrews 3 and 4. For every house is built by someone. Understand this. Every house is built by someone. It did not say God. It said by someone. Everything in this world is built by a person. But God is the builder of everything. Grab a hold of that. Everything is built by a person. If God wants it done, he'll build it. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says a person builds it. Okay, get your hands dirty. Get your hands. This is what my dad would do when I was little. He would, he'd come home. Come here, son. Let me see your hand. Ain't no calluses. I thought you were going to build a fence today. And so sometimes I would just go get my hands and rub along the pole or something, you know. But he would say, son, your hands are too clean. Your hands are too clean. You know, we're supposed to build. It says in Proverbs something, something, it says wise people are builders. Okay? It's 24, 26 or one of those 20s. 
um, verse 3 through 4. I think it's 26, 3 through 4. It says, wise people are builders. What are you building? If your mindset is on paycheck to paycheck, you're missing the whole kingdom of God. The enemy will try to get you thinking about every natural thing that you can't think forward on the kingdom of God. For every house is built by someone, but God is ultimately the builder of everything. When you're under the canopy of favor and the kingdom, he will provide everything that you need. Listen, God has, let me just really teach you this last point today. God has more visions he needs to give out. He has a surplus. He just can't find the people to do them. And, and, and this, was, this is what people that frustrate me say. Give me something, Lord. What did you do with the last thing he gave you? Show me a result. Show me something. Do you know how many people say, God's called me to write a book or write books. Let me see your first one. Okay. God's called me to write a song. Let me see your first one. God's called me to start businesses. Let me see your first one. Have you done anything? Once you get rolling with God, he will pour it out so fast you can't even keep up. Listen, there's no limit to God. There's none. Do you know you are in your life where you are because of the person you chose to become? There are more books. There are more scriptures that we don't know the depth of. God in prayer, there's a depth to God in prayer that we don't even know. I mean, Peter shadow healed the sick. I walk by people and go, all the time. And, and if they don't get healed, I got more to learn, okay? You got to, y'all know, Winmark, you know you do that. Led well, you go by, pray that person gets saved. But you know, you, you got to understand, there is a power, an unlimited power to you. Now, let me tell you one of the problems that a lot of people do. The church, the way I see it as an apostle, I'm not a pastor, I'm an apostle. Our job here is to give you encouragement and equip you and train you Listen, you are the ministers. You are a church yourself. You go out there and you impact people. A lot of churches, and that's great they do this because everybody needs to serve in the house. Everything is focused on in the house, but they ain't coming in the house. They're all out there in the world. We've got to go and go to the undesirable places. Go to the places people don't want to go and see somebody healed. See somebody changed. If i got to go somewhere that I don't want to go, somebody's getting healed. Somebody's getting saved. Just, it's, just, it's just part of it. you got to do that. But listen, God is calling you to build something today. If you understand the heaviness is lifting. It failed last time, but it won't this time. It, I went bankrupt last time. You won't this time. Well, it just I don't care where you are. Listen, I, 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 I say stuff sometimes. That I just say it, but I was at a down around Houston at a place, and this one lady she said, I've been divorced for my third time. I said, ah, that fourth one will work. And I, I was like, did I just say that? And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. And, uh, but I'm prophetic. And so I was at a meeting on the other side of Houston a few years later, and she walked up and said, look at him. And I didn't know this lady. And I said, hey. And she said, look at him. Remember, you told me I was divorced three, the fourth one will work. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, praise, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Man, I love when people say, man, I've been bankrupt on two, three businesses. Oh, the next one will work. The next one's going to work. And it works. Oh, I tried to write that book ten times. Oh, that don't work. It's the 11th that really works. And they try, listen, it's going to work. It, it's going to work. Just try it again. It's, you know, it's like I've heard people say, oh, I've dated. I can't find a, a good spouse. Listen, God's got you somebody. Ruth. He got you a Boaz. Come on now. Autumn got hers. No, <laughs> but no. Listen, that, that job that you said, I'm never going to get that job. I promise you it's behind your next application. That, that you want to start that side business, do it. I'm telling you, this is your season. Okay. He is removing heaviness. It is lifting. That means no chaos. It's going to get easier. You have divine intel. Remember that word forever. Divine intel. And then rise above things prophetically like an eagle. And you can find the living in any situation. If you ever see an eagle circling over brush, only 100% of the time there is something alive in that brush. The brush looks dead 
okay? But there's something alive in that brush. There is something alive in every situation. And when a situation looks dead, ask the Lord, is it dead? It could possibly be planted. It's not buried. And it's going to come back to life. There's been things I wanted to give up on. And the Lord said, no, try it one more time. Just, just, just wait another day. I, there was a stock that I, I was frustrated with, and I was going to sell it because it wasn't doing nothing. It was asleep. And the Lord said, hang on to it for another month. That joker tripled in a month. It woke up one day, had a cup of coffee, and took off running up the charts. It, you know what? And the Lord said, listen to me, even on investing, and I will show you things. There's some people that you wanted to give up on, but God is saying, hang on. They're about to turn around. They're, listen, and sometimes, you know, a basketball for it to come back up it has to hit rock bottom to come back up you know be patient with people through the process but this is a season divine intel and rise up prophetically it's going to shift you're going to have your mind set on the things of the lord and i felt today that we were supposed to pray and anoint people because I don't even want to say breakthrough. It's kind of like that, but it's more of a launching. Today is going to be a day of launching that you are going to be restored. And I almost, you know, those shirts that say like, you know, whatever business or ministry established. And then there's a year. Today's going to be your day. You are established. I mean, I mean, today is the day that you are going to start moving forward at a greater degree than ever before. You are. And I just feel the Lord saying it's like if you will allow him to, just let the wind of God blow your past away. Let go of it. Just let it go, okay? One day, the Lord helped me with a fundraiser when I was a youth pastor. I was raking leaves. And one time I burned a guy's yard down, but I made $1,000 for the Lord. But this was another time. The, the <laughs> okay, here's the deal. We were raking leaves. We were raking leaves. And these kids weren't working, and I thought, man, I could just burn these things. And so I did. It was smart, right? I, they were mad, but they paid us, and so we burned it. But one day, I was, got some kids. I was teaching them how to work in this widow's yard, and I said, God, these kids, they, they weren't raised on a farm. And the Holy Spirit sent a wind. I said, God, send a wind. A little bit later, the wind started blowing and blew all those leaves off this lady's yard. And she came out and said, oh, thank you all for helping me in the yard. I thought, oh, it was our service. It was us and the Lord. <laughs> you know, that might sound silly to you. But sometimes, like, like one time I was with Big Nanny cleaning out one of her sheds. And she said, hey, preacher boy, ask the Holy Spirit to send us a wind because it's hot out here on Big Nanny. And I said, that's weird, big nanny. And I'm Pentecostal. And uh, she said, well, I'm Baptist. Let me teach you something about the Holy Spirit. I said, okay. She said, Holy Spirit, send us a wind. I about fell over that wind blew so hard. She said, thank you, Lord. That's enough. She said, you need some more faith. And I said, okay. That might sound silly to you, but not to big nanny. Okay. You got to understand, you have so much divine intel. And everything can shift just like that for you. Today, you get one word from God, everything will change in your life, okay? And so listen, when he gives you the word, you, you don't get to talk with him about it. You just got to do it, all right? And you're going to learn how to, to, to pick up prophetically and move forward into things. And the word I'm hearing in my spirit today is increase. Increase, increase, increase is coming to your life. And I hope you have faith. And that I was kidding, not really, but about try to lead somebody to the Lord this week and try to pray for three people. I bet four of them will get healed. Because when you pray for people, somebody around them always gets healed. Hey, excuse me, can you pray for me? Oh, yeah, I saw that person get healed. Oh, cool, yeah, I got a minute. Then I'm going to go buy my coffee, okay? Shanda, they getting it too. You start laying hands, you start, you, you'll cause a revival somewhere. You just gotta, you just gotta be bold. We were at the fair and we was gonna get some, some stuff and some fair food and 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 Malachi's up there, praying for folks, leading the the the, the carnies, you know. And uh, they, they, what they're called? I don't know. 
And uh, <laughs> it sounds like carnal, so I don't know. <laughs> so she, there's this lady, she's getting some lemonade, and Autumn takes a picture of her. She's got an old girl up there, and she's got her hand, and she's halfway in the wind, and she's praying for her. I mean, that's what you got to do. Get some lemonade and give them some prayer. They acted like they needed it, okay, according to, to some of the stuff they would say. But, hey, hey, everywhere you go, just be ready to lay hands on somebody, okay? Pray for somebody. Get somebody healed out in the streets. Cause a ruckus in this city. God told me to call this church Roar. He didn't call it Purr, okay? We're here to roar. And listen, we can roar on Sunday, and that's cute. I want you out there. I want y'all calling me this week, telling me about some stories. I want some testimonies next week. Okay, I want some testimonies of some people leading some people, pulling somebody up out of a wheelchair, seeing somebody healed. All right. That's y'all's homework assignment. I'm done. All right. So I'm going to pray. Anybody who wants prayer, come up. If you don't come up and we're going to lay hands and anoint every person with oil. And you are going to leave this place under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. And you are going to increase in every area of your life. And this is what I'm hearing from the Lord. There was a scripture I talked about strategies that, the, that was in here about strategy. Oh, yeah, Isaiah 11, 2. I heard the Lord say wise strategies and a better systems for your life are coming. Some of you change one or two daily habits. Everything shifts. Mine for 30 years has been early morning prayer. Okay, early morning prayer. And, and, Lord, I just declare over every person here that we walk in divine strategies this week. You were going to show us heavenly wisdom for us personally, for our life spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, how to deal with certain people, how to deal with relationships, how to lead other people to you, how to help other people. Lord, if there's such a thing as a four-wheel drive anointing, we want it that we can lock up with people and get them unstuck. Get them unstuck. This is what we're going to do, Lord. We're going to pull people out from where they are. And, Lord, I declare that over people's lives in the name of Jesus. And I pray that every one of us encounter you in a strong way in the altar.